So today we're going to look at a tune called uh, The Dusty Window Sills, The Dusty Window Sill, or as I first heard it, Dust on the Window Sill. It's a composition of a whistle player from Chicago called Johnny Harling. That's become very popular, very much a session, a session standard. Um, the version that I'm going to show you, I really don't know where it comes from. Uh, I think it's pretty standard. I can't think where or how I learned this tune. I might have first heard it from a flute player in Australia called Viv Armitage many years ago, but it just somehow wormed its way into my brain. And um, I haven't checked any official versions um, posted on the web, but um, I think you'll find this will fit in nicely with the way people play it in sessions. Uh, it's, the tune is in A minor, that is a Dorian, and it's a satisfying tune to play on the C-sharp T box, so let's get stuck into it. I'll play the tune all the way through first, and then we'll break it down part by part, okay? <laughs> through the first part of the tune. Start with your index finger on a low E here. And the first note of the tune proper is going to be A. A long A, although we could play it differently. We'll look at that in a minute. So, here we go. Here's the first phrase. Get your index up onto the A. Here. Make that nice and smooth. Nice legato, not okay. Next phrase, high E. Same notes apart from the fact that the E is up the top here. Put the two together. So G, F sharp, G on the pull using the outer row, F sharp. And that last part there, we're going to move up the scale and do it by swap your index over your middle. On G, on your index finger. So that whole phrase there. One more time. Go up to A, and then swap. Playing that familiar phrase. So. Let's do the whole tune so as far as we've got, okay? So from the beginning. Here we go. Three, four. Okay, and after that. So going from that um, familiar phrase. You 
using the outer F sharp because I like the smoothness of this. But you could just as easily use, quite satisfactorily use the F sharp on the row. Okay, and after that comes the little fi final phrase. Let's try the whole first part together. Three, four. So that's the first part. We'll look at uh, some variations you can do after I've taught you the whole tune. All right, let's go on to the second part. Now, the second part is going to be finished up on now. Uh, why not move your index onto that A to finish so that you can easily judge, easily judge your octave? Because the next note's going to be a high A, and it'd be as well to play it with our middle finger. So we might make the transition something like this. Okay, so when we found the note, what are we going to do with it? We're going to play... Uh, actually, I didn't end up with my middle finger there, did I? Right, having done that, here we go. Okay, so A, B, A, A, and between the last two A's we're going to do a grace note. And get back up to G again on your middle finger, okay? One more time. An answering phrase based around the G. F sharp here. If you want to use it on the row, that's fine. Harder to get a legato feeling, so if you like the legato feeling, use your outer row. Alright, so we've got two phrases there. something that we had in the first part, not quite in the same way. After getting that long low G, we're going to play. So we played G, and we go. Sorry. That 
ascending phrase there is very satisfying to play. It's very much a pull phrase. So if we stitch that together with... slowly, twice, three, So that's the second part without any variations. We'll look at those later. Now, on to the third part, which is uh, perhaps the trickiest part and the part that gives the tune its character. So the third part gives the tune its character because of these syncopated phrases that we get at the beginning. Now, uh, for the sake of practice, let's play a long A here, lasting three beats. So in your mind, you go da da dum, ba da dum, and then a G, back to A and then F sharp, and back to a long A. One, two, three. So it was one, two, three, ba, 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 one, two, three. And make sure that those uh, top notes jump out. Okay, and then there's a linking phrase. G, E, D. Which you might want to finger like this. Because the next note is G, so that might make things easy for you. I generally just jump. So if you put the linking phrase together with the first bit we get. And we'll go to G after that. So again. you practice that as a loop and when you've got it really going well you can think about putting three notes instead of the long A. I'd suggest for simplicity's sake okay practice that for a while now the G phrase that the high again a long G three beats da, 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 three notes da. And the top notes are D, pull, D, push. The pushes and pulls are somewhat reversed from the A phrase, so that's something to get your head around or your muscle memory around. And the linking phrase is... which leads us back to A. So with the linking phrase, if you want to play it as a loop, you could just play okay. And if you want to play three notes, back to A. We don't go any further. Instead of the linking phrase, we play an upward linking phrase, and we're back on familiar territory. So the second A phrase. So let's play the whole third part together slowly and using three notes. Okay, if you're not ready yet, just play the long note there. Here we go. Three, four. more 
slowly. Three, four. concentration there a little bit. Um, now the next thing you want to do is to change that constant A, B, A and there's various ways we can do that. There we have the three basic parts of the tune. Now let's look at some variations you can play. Uh, one thing I like to do instead of starting like this with a long A and a pick up note of E Instead of doing that, you can incorporate the pickup note into the phrase, into the main, the first bar. I like doing that because the two phrases become identical apart from the fact that the E is in a different octave. So that's one thing you can do. Um, When you get to this G, F sharp G that I showed you, an obvious place to uh, vary, uh, you could play a long and short G, you could play one long G, you could play three Gs. You could play three Gs and put a grace note in, what I call a half roll. You could play uh, G F sharp G as I showed you, but with a grace note. So I'm hitting the grace note first. This is not a roll, by the way because only the first note changes. You could also sound the first note first. Okay, if you want to convert that into a roll proper, you could do... So... Hang on to the first note a bit. So there's a variety of things you could do with that G. Let's carry on. Here I'm using, as I said, outer row for a smooth pull, pull, pull sequence. But why not play? Sometimes for the sake of variety. When you get this top A, you could you could do a grace note on top, or you could come in from underneath, which I find very effective. Here too. Some obvious places, okay, in the second part. You can do all manner of things with that high A. Instead of playing A B A A, you could play three A's with or without a grace note. That's without. Or or a long A with octaves. Same thing with the everything that you've done with the A, you can do with the G. so on. And when you get to the third part, what could you do there differently? Well, you could do a half roll. Which you could swing or not swing. You could play. there, but you could experiment with
with octaves there. All kinds of things, so have fun with it. And don't play it the same way all the time. Mix it up, so do a half roll, then a long note, then the ABA, whatever you like. So, there's the dusty windowsills, dust on the windowsill, the dusty windowsill, whatever it is, Johnny Harling's tune. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you work hard on the tune and bring it up to speed. Thanks for watching.